Okay. I think we're there. Good afternoon, ladies and gents. Hope you're all feeling well. Uh, Shropshire Lad here, coming to you with the this week's live cook along. Uh, a Jamaican rice and pea risotto. Uh, so basically, say it's a take on Jamaican rice and peas, um, which is a classic dish. Uh, last week, well, earlier this week, if you uh, got involved with the chicken tikka masala, you'll hopefully have your um, your stock ready that you made. You've got your chicken. So I've got here. I've got my chicken pulled off the meat off the bone that we, uh, that we made last week. Got the stock now. Hopefully you've got your homemade stock. Look how gelatinous that is. That's how you know the stock's good. When you le you've left it to sit in the fridge and you end up with basically jelly, that is amazing. And that is going to tra transform the flavor of this. So whenever you're making a risotto, it's really, really important the stock that you use is hot. Yeah, You don't want to be putting it in cold like that because it's going to keep bringing the temperature down. So what I'm going to do is going to... And what I want you guys to do, if you've got stock, or if you're going to make it with a stock cube, that's fine. Get your stock made up now. Have it hot. Have it ready. So I'm just going to chuck this on real quick. Uh, this is a weird, weird old thing. Should really be cooking with fire today, to be honest with you. Um, but anyway, hey-ho. So I'm going to go for a decent uh, boil water. That'll do. Right. So I'm going to leave that on to get hot. And then I'm going to get prepped for the next bit while that's warming up. So, take your onions, just going to take top off the onion, leave the bottom on, because this is going to help you with the slicing, you want to slice it nice and thin, like, well, not, not into like little, little diced really, into small pieces. You want to make sure that there's onion in every single bite when you, uh, when you have, you know, a mouthful of risotto. It's a one pot wonder as a risotto, you know, it's something that, yeah, you basically make it in one pot, which is what a one pot wonder, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it's in one pot. So you've got to get loads of different flavors going on in every single mouthful, which means that if you break all of the ingredients down fairly small, then you're going to get all those flavors in every mouthful. So I've run the knife along the onion there, still got the root on, so it's something to hold on to, to run it along. And then if you go across, just nice and gentle, like nice and close together, you end up with lovely little diced pieces of onion. Let me get that to one side. This thing is super hot and this is already getting runnier, so that's great. All right, do the other half of the onion and then the other onion. So we'll do two onions and then we're going to go in with some garlic. I've got the scrappiest piece of ginger left now. That is miserable, but. It's going to be better than nothing. We really are sort of uh, working with what we've got in cupboards now. Um, I'm sure you guys are all the same. Supermarkets are rinsed. You know, we shouldn't be going out to the supermarket every 10 minutes. You know, I thought, thought of keeping out for some fresh supplies earlier. And I thought, you know what? what got? This, is a, this is lockdown cooking. This is us trying to sort of make stuff with what's in the cupboards already. So I'm just going to improvise. There's a few bits today where I haven't even got the ingredients I told you guys to get but I'll show you how I'm going to improvise and it's not I don't want anybody to be following any recipes to tea like you know you don't need to do that you just get confident with your cooking get confident with flavors the more you cook the more that will come along um and then you and you start to learn how you can improvise and change things you know and it's part of the fun I love to use a recipe book for inspiration, but I can't remember the last time I followed a recipe like to the tea. It's just oh, actually no, that's a lie. I made Nigella's Guinness cake this week for uh, as a birthday. Birthday. Uh, well, I shouldn't be giving a Guinness cake really to a four-year-old, four-year-old, seven-year-old, but decided to because it's just such a good chocolate cake. So I do follow like baking. You know, it's a bit different. You have to follow it to the tea because it's science in it, and if you get sort of 10 grams of flour out it's going to completely change your cake or whatever but when you're making something like a risotto you just use whatever you've got you know like within reason i'm not saying you know you want to put jelly babies in here or something but you know just use what you've got in the house right so onions done i'm hoping by the time i've done 
the garlic and the ginger will be ready to go in with the pan. This stock is honestly going to be what's going to make this delicious. I really hope that you've made your stock. I know a few people sent me pictures on Instagram and Facebook of their stock pots going away. So hopefully you guys are going to see the benefits of this. Okay, so that's two onions done. Going to take a carrot. Just take top and bottom off. Again, you want to try and break this down into sort of same size pieces as the onion. So I'm just going to run the knife along it like this. And then, so you've got long pieces of carrot like that. And then we go down this way. So straight down, cut it into strips. So four across the middle and then across. And you've got nice little dices of carrot that will soften really quickly. If your carrot lumps are too big, then they're still going to be hard when you come to eat them. You want these to almost, because a, a risotto is something that takes time, you know, I'm probably going to be talking an awful lot of rubbish while I'm stirring the stock in and keeping it ticking. It's something you want a glass of wine, really, and you want to just sort of chill out. It's a real good, chilling kind of dish that you can't rush. Um, but, yeah, it'll probably take 40 minutes, 35, 40 minutes of adding stock, stirring, adding stock, stirring. So these carrots will pretty much be non-existent by the time we serve. So I'm just going to run down that carrot again, like that, and across. All the way down. And by the time that this last bit's done, we're going to have some hot stock, which can come off and sit to one side, and we can start frying these two bits off. It's important, certainly with onions, that you cook your onions off we want to be getting it down to the point where they are almost caramelizing. They're giving us some nice, sort of intense flavors. Um, people often fry onions for like 30 seconds and then the next thing goes in. I'm going to put the carrots in with the onions as well, but that's all that's going in with them. Oh, my back, bending down, because if I stand up, you're going to lose my head. So I'm doing this for you. So we're going to take this off now, because that stock is hot and now liquid which is great. That can just rest on the Kadai there. More than one use to Kadai Fireball. Great little table as well if you get the lid. Right, put this one on and we're gonna crank it. So we're on boil water. In fact, that's gonna be hot enough, I would have thought. Uh, so we're gonna hit it with a decent amount of oil. Now, one of the things that we do need to do when we make a risotto is you need to fry off the rice for a little while. So you need to make sure you put in a decent amount of oil. I'd say maybe like a tablespoon and a bit in there. Okay. And then we're going to put all of that sizzling away straight away. Awesome. And then I'm just going to get that moving. And just start to hopefully get some colour going on your onions and carrot there. One thing I always say to people when you're trying to reduce down your onions or any vegetables, your friend is going to be salt because it just draws the moisture out. So hit it with a bit of salt. We're going to keep that moving nicely, nicely. Okay. Right. I'm going to kneel down because I think I feel like it's going to be better for my back and you're going to be able to see me better. Right. Got this horrible little nugget of ginger that we're going to use. It's probably on a good day would have thrown it out, but you know, this is all I got, and we're on lockdown, so don't waste anything. I've still got a decent amount there. I did have a chap message me uh, about a teaspoon to skin your ginger, which I keep meaning to do and keep forgetting. Um, so if you're watching, mate, it's not because I wasn't listening to you. It's just because I keep forgetting to do it, and I've heard that tip before. And it's something that I forget, but apparently using the edge of a teaspoon, you can skin skin ginger, it just peels off and you don't lose all the ginger that I just lost down there. So I'm gonna chop that roughly there. Okay, and we're gonna go with plenty of garlic. Just gonna get this moving. When I come to add the right, I start adding the stock, we'll turn this down, but at the moment you want your heat quite high so we can start to sweat these onions off quickly. 
Right, we're going to go for four cloves of garlic. So, side of the knife, bash, bash. Okay, and then that just means that it peels really easily. Peel just falls off. Get that out of the way. You don't want any paper in there. Move these kidney beans all the way. Right, keep peeling the uh, garlic. These onions are like starting to look real good now. I hope that there's like a cooler setting. This is a really weird um, induction hub. I got it from Aldi. It's 30 quid. It's helped me out with loads of different things, but I find induction's really difficult to sort of get on with, to be honest. So bear with me if it looks like a crucified stuff. It's actually looking really good in there, so shouldn't really be moaning. I'm going to stand up to chop these. Right, so garlic. Let's go for that one. Okay, garlic's chopped. Garlic and ginger is going to sit there. It's not going in yet. The next thing that's going to go in, believe it or not, is actually the rice. So this, these are sweated down nicely. The rice, it's really important with the risotto that we get a decent amount of oil onto the rice and fry it up a little bit, or I like to anyway. I'll probably get somebody who actually knows what they're doing with Italian cooking telling me I'm talking absolute rubbish, but this is how I roll and it works for me. So I have like 400 grams of rice there. Okay, and then work that into the fat, into all of the onions. I'm just gonna start frying it off for a little bit. I think this setting for heating milk is much more like a risotto temperature than uh, the boiling water setting. It doesn't seem to seem like I can turn it up and down. It's strange. There we go. So, frying those off. I actually liked it hotter. I'm going to go back to the boiling water setting. And then, see if I can turn it down a little bit. Let's see. So, either too hot or too cold. But I'm basically, the important thing is that the rice is completely coated and has sort of been fried before we start to add anything else. Is it coming up? It's cranking. As I say, if you're standing in the kitchen, a bottle of wine on a Saturday night, ticking a risotto ticking over you know just giving it a little stir having a little slurp got a bit of music on it's one of my favorite things to make it's awesome so work that through i'm going to leave that for one sec now one of the main flavors in jerk in jamaican cooking um is the scotch bonnet chili okay probably quite hard for a lot of people to get hold of especially at the moment uh, so you can substitute with normal chili, but my favourite thing for a substitute is Encona sauce. So this stuff is basically a Scotch bonnet chili sauce. Um, it's got exactly the Scotch bonnet flavours that you want, um, but it's very sort of well, it, it's consistent in the heat that it offers. I find Scotch bonnet chilies can be massively varied in heat, and you can end up blowing your own head off, or it's not hot enough. So with Encona, especially when I'm making like a jerk marinade or something, it's something that I use rather than using fresh chilies because I can totally regulate it and it just packs the flavour of Scotch bonnet. It's such a distinctive flavour, so important in, in the food. We're going to hold back with that for now, but I am going to put some fresh green chilli in, which isn't particularly a hot one, but I'm going to just chop a little bit of that up. This is a gesture. Well, I've got a seven-year-old who's going to have to eat this, so I'm going to hold back on my chilies. You guys know if you want it hot or not, how much of that to put in. Okay, so we've got our chilies, garlic and ginger going. We've definitely got, the rice is starting to toast. I'm almost getting a little bit of smoke here, so that's too much. It's this hob is 
ridiculous. There we go. So in we're going to go with the chili, ginger, and garlic. We'll start getting some good flavors coming now. It smells, good aromas. So work the chili, garlic, ginger in. Okay, and then just before we start to add the stock, I'm going to add some spices too. So go down to lower setting. So we've got some ground coriander. I'm going to go for two, te two teaspoons of ground coriander. Okay. I'm going to go with some cumin seeds, about a teaspoon. Cumin is not traditionally something you get really in Caribbean food, but I like it in this risotto. It just sort of gives it an extra depth of flavor. Work those in a little bit. Okay, then we're going to go with the star player here, which is pimento or allspice. Now, you can't really get away with Caribbean food without allspice. So important. So in goes a tablespoon of allspice. It's sort of like cinnamony, clovey. It's just a real rich look, depth of flavors. Amazing spice, one of my favorites. So working that in, it's sort of looking like quite a sort of lot of awesome colors going on in here now. The smells are quite rich and it's, it's, it's smelling really good. So what we're going to do now, now we've worked that in and all the spices are in and the rice is fried. This is where we start to add our stock. So every sort of, as soon as the, the last bit of stock is evaporated, now that is running too hot. You want to have your, you want to have the heat lower than that. Okay. That's my bad. It's this thing. It's, I should have been, I would have been better off cooking on the Kadai, to be fair. I can regulate fire better than I can regulate one of these things. Ridiculous. But there we go. So you do want it just ticking over now. You don't want it to be, you know, disappearing the second that the stock goes in. There we go. Slow it down a bit now. So start working your stock. And we should just keep working round, working round until the stock disappears. When it's almost virtually gone, then you go for another label of stock and the longer you do this the more stock you can get into that the more intense the flavor is going to be with that chicken stock which is you know it's an absolute banger um and when you've made your own you want to try and get as much of that in pint and a half be great um so we're going to just keep working that round like so now somebody asked, was asking me earlier random question but how do you make dishes pop how do you make it sort of take stuff to the next level and like it's a bit of a, it was a bit of an open random question to be honest because it depends what you're talking about but my general rule is to have some heat have some salt have some sweet have some sour yeah those four things will make a dish pop and uh so a risotto is no different well not necessarily always heat but in the, it's this is a caribbean you know supposed to be like a rice and peas style risotto so we're gonna have some heat but the um, acidity is going to come from a lime. Now, what I want to do with this is I'm going to squeeze half of it in. So I'm going to put half to one side. But then the other half, now this is something I worked, learned off a local chef, um, Stu Collins, if you're watching. This is one I nicked from your restaurant. Uh, you should check him out, Doc at 33. Check out his Instagram. Guy is doing some killer Killer food, unfortunately, not in action at the moment, uh, but looks like he's having a great time with his kids at home, which is really nice to see. So anyway, I'm slicing off, this is something I nicked from Stu, slicing off the skin of the lime. This is ready for some more stock, by the way. Another ladle. I'm gonna go for two. Splashing it everywhere. And keep working that stock in. It smells incredible. Okay, so skin off to one side. I love working here, just chucking whatever anywhere. Right, and then, so you'll see you got segments look a little bit like, well, it looks just like a bit of lemon now, yeah? Um, so what we're going to do, turn this up now because it's gone almost off. Oh, I'm not using this thing again, I'll tell you now. Right, that's going again, which is good. 
So what you want to do is take any pith off, so you don't want any white bits or anything like this. And then we're just going to slice this into tiny, tiny little bits of lime. Literally like put it on my little fingernail. Yeah. And that's how big you want these bits. So take some time with a sharp knife to get some segments of lime slice. You don't want to have any of those white bits, stringy bits. So whilst your risotto is ticking away, you keep stirring it and adding a bit more stock. This takes some time to make up these tiny little bits of lime because you're going to put those through right at the end and they are going to make the dish pop like we were talking about. They're really going to make it come turn to another level. And you're going to yeah, and we're going to squeeze some lime through there, but when you get a little bite of actual lime in your risotto, it just like elevates it. So such a such a cool idea. I think I'm sure I can't remember the dish now, which doesn't sound good. I think I'd had a few beers, um, but I think Stu used um, grapefruit, and it works well like that. But it's a great way of getting a little citrus hit into a dish. When you don't necessarily want the lime to be in everything, occasionally just getting a little hit like this, it's just it's just so good. So just gonna portion those up. Stock's going well, risotto, sorry, is going well. So I'm about a third of the way through my stock now. And that's ticking away lovely so we're gonna go another one keep on top of it keep it moving we want it to end up being almost creamy and that's partly from the starch of the, the rice but also from constant stirring it means that you are bashing the edge of the rice constantly and you end up with this like creamy texture to risotto that's so important so we're gonna keep chopping up my bits of lime as that ticks away Get everything ready so that you can just whack it in as you need it. It's the line gets done. Lovely. Right, so there, going to one side. Put that line ready there. Got the chicken. The great thing about uh, taking the breasts off chicken and then using the leg meat is the leg meat just pulls apart. You know, so literally I want to have nice, noticeable bits of chicken in this, not like tiny little cubes. So I'm just going to shred it with my hands so you just get nice little strings. And this is all stuff you can do whilst your risotto is there ticking away on a stove. Right, we've got to this point. I'm about halfway through my stock. I'm going to add the kidney beans. Okay, so a tin of kidney beans that goes straight in. Okay, you want to start cooking, cooking those through as well. They'll start to, edges will start to bash, you'll start to get little flecks of purple off the skin on the rice, which is something that sort of stands out when you have you know, classic rice and peas. You want to have that. You don't want to be adding them at the end so they're still really fresh and like they're out of the tin. They want to look like they've been through the mill in there with, the, with everything else, soaking up the juices. Another ladle of stock. So it keeps you busy. If you, you know, if you stagger the stuff you're doing, it keeps you busy. So I'm just shredding more chicken here by hand. And keep that going. Stir. You feel, if you feel anything sticking to the bottom of the pan at all, you need to make sure you get underneath it. It probably means your pan's a bit too hot. I can't change the uh the temp here which is frustrating it'll be fine but you if you're cooking on gas at home or you've probably got a better induction hob than this 30 quid thing um you can control it you just want it just ticking away okay keep threading chicken feels so good just this, see, this wouldn't happen with the breast meat. And this is why when we cooked the, uh, the breast meat the other day, we grilled it. You know, you have to stop breast meat, like, bang on. When it hits 72, you don't want to go any further than that because it's going to just start to get um, kind of uh, stringy and oily. You know, if you, 
if you ever cook like a chicken stew with chicken breast and then you get like the really rubbery bullets of chicken it's just nasty so chicken breast cook real quick but the leg meat you can fry that you can sorry bake that carcass for an hour and a half the leg meat's just going to fall away and it's still going to be super juicy and tender so lots oh, there's a little bit of bone there and oh, that, that going in i think that's about it there's a few scraps i don't need in there so chicken keeps moving this risotto and then we're going to get two thirds of the way down we're going to add coconut milk so i think one more ladle of stock into there and now i'm going to get my coconut milk opened we're going to drop that in at this stage because again as much as i want to get as much of the flavor of the um stock in here once the rice is two-thirds cooked which we're probably there now it's a good time to think about adding your coconut milk it's going to get creamier but you want to try and get as much coconut milk in there as possible it's about the only fat you've got in this and fat is flavor coconut milk's an absolute dream love it so kind of coconut milk in okay just work that in might look a little bit rough to start with but as it cooks it'll start to look better so that's going to take a little while to come back up to temperature now because that coconut milk was um was cold so it's just going to give us a little bit of time just work that into your risotto it's starting to look nice and creamy now and it's just important that you just at this point we're literally just going to stir get anything that's stuck on the edge of the uh, edge of the pan in it's going to keep working and it will it looks like you've swamped it but believe me that rice will soak it all up it's going to keep working it work it baby work it just keep moving and hopefully you don't have your thing as hot as mine is at the moment but there we go i'm going to go for a little squirt of encona at this point if you're using Encona, it's a good time to put it in. I'm not putting much in just because, you know, I've got little ones eating it. I don't want to put them off. Just getting used to eating spice, you know, and the last thing you want to do is uh, blow her brains out and put her off. So if kids are involved, be kind, guys. You can always add more Encona to your own later or some extra Scotch bonnet chili. I'm going to keep working that. splattering away at me it's looking good nice and thick and at this point now as it's starting to thicken up I'm gonna add my chicken okay so again that's gonna bring the temperature down but that's going to that, that leg meat again will soak up some of your liquid. I haven't added any salt yet. But what I'm going to do is wait till the end because I find that the rice will soften more quickly if the salt's added later rather than sooner. So that's looking really creamy and delicious now. Might not need any more stock. We'll see. Keep it going. But the next thing I'm going to put in is some thyme. Fresh thyme I've got here. You can use dry thyme or fresh thyme. I tend to buy it fresh and freeze it because I don't get through that much of it. But literally, I find that the best way to get, when it's woody thyme like this, you just give it a little wrangle in your hands. The thyme is key ingredient in any sort of jerk marinade or you know, Caribbean food, time, believe it or not, plays a big part. Work it in. Just gonna, you don't want them stalks in there, really. And just a few dropped in there. We've got some nice bits of thyme there. It's good. I'm going to add some pepper. This is some beautiful red Cambodian uh, pepper. You can just use black pepper. It's fine. Just using what I've got. So working that there. 
It's really starting to look good now, looking like a risotto to me. Ooh. And turn that right down there. It's really starting to look creamy and tasty, which is exactly what we want. I'm not gonna add the citrus until literally at the end because what I want is for that to almost remain like a fresh piece of lime in there and not cook. But what we are gonna do in a second is add some lime. First of all, I've got some knackered old bits of, uh, this really is the dregs of my coriander. Couldn't get any more fresh. Um, as I showed you the other day, you wanna use the stalks. I'm gonna use every, every last bit of this because I say it's the last bit I've got. So whack up the stalks, the leaf end leaf because it's really good for garnish. But the stalks still hold exactly the same flavor as the leaves. So we're gonna put those there. Fresh coriander goes in. Keep working it. There we go, this is looking good. I know it's going to need a bit of salt, so I'm going to put some in now, and I can always add a little bit more later on. Needs be. You can always add more, but you can't take it out, I always say. Okay. It's looking very much like a risotto to me. Just gonna check the pasta, sorry, the pasta, the rice. Excuse me, it's only us eating it here, so I'm gonna double dip. Mm. I don't think that needs any more salt. Maybe a tiny bit. Go for a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more stock. Change my settings again. I reckon it's two or three minutes away. I haven't got my assistant today to bring me a plate. I need to get a plate to plate this up. Keep stirring. It is a labor of love. Just keep going. Keep going. Just scraping it off the bottom of the pan. Gonna go for another ladle of stock because it's soaked that up. That rice is still taking on more. You want to stop when it's al dente, so that's two ladles. I'm sure that's going to be enough now. Just slowly let it come round. Obviously, I'm not cooking it slowly because I don't have that option on this thing, but you should be. So hopefully, you'll still be going long after I've gone home. I am home, but you know what I mean? Long after I've left you. Okay, you're almost there. I'm just gonna loosely chop the last bits of this uh, around the leaves for garnish. Uh, that's coming around. You'll start to see that all of the, the bits of chicken will break down. It almost looks like what you see in like chicken soup where you just get little strings of chicken all through it. As I say, it's about being able to get a mouthful of everything in every single bite. I am just going to go and grab a plate so I can plate this up and show you. One sec. down off the heat now last little bit 
going to get a few wedges of lime sorted. The garnish. I'm going to squeeze the last bit of lime in there. Oops. Don't throw the whole thing in. Okay, now this part, this point is where we're going to put in those chopped bits of lime as well. So you're going to just get maybe a couple of bits in your uh, on your plate. You're not going to have that in every mouthful because it'd be too much. But it's nice just to get that little explosion of citrus, of acidity, every now and then. All right, that, my friends done so it's gonna plate some up let's turn this off we'll keep in it because this is a nice big thick cast iron pan and the heat is still in the bottom of it so it's gonna keep cooking just for a little bit longer and it's just coming together lovely now i've pretty much used all my stuff i've probably got like two ladles left so i'm really happy with that it's better to have a little bit left than not to uh, have enough a little bit of time stalk there just assess that as you go and then it's plating up so probably not going to look like it's from a restaurant that's because it's not from a restaurant but it's nice and it's loads of sauce so yeah it on the edge okay and then just add some fresh coriander and wedge of lime and there we have Jamaican style chicken rice and pea risotto done in half an hour give it a go the stock makes a difference I'm Shropshire Lad out of my channel please drop us a comment in the in the box uh, happy days enjoy your lockdown enjoy your Easter um, I haven't decided what we're gonna be cooking next week from on, on Tuesday or Friday um, so if you fancy ch chucking me some suggestions then I'll make a decision tomorrow and I'll send, as usual, I'll send out, um, you know, the ingredients and, and what we're going to do and you can get on it then. Right. I'm off. Catch you later, folks. Bye.